Hello and welcome back to SRB Gaming. This is KSP Exploration Episode 9. And uh, this is the launch of the ARD-1 uh, probe aboard a single stage to orbit. So ARD-1 stands for Asteroid Redirect Device, and 1 is because it is the version for just redirecting. It does not include resource drills. And uh, yeah, as you might have guessed, this is a Asteroid Redirect mission. Our target is a Class C, so fairly large, although not the largest, uh, asteroid located in a highly elliptical orbit with a periapsis about 10,000 meters above the atmosphere and an apoapsis about twice as far out as Minmus. I assume that it uh, encountered the moon and as such it got a gravity assist which caused it to go into orbit instead of just flying by. But that's not my problem because I need to send a probe there. Now, uh, sometimes in time more highly elliptical orbits like that can have issues and uh, change their parameters. I've had stuff escape from the system like that, so I wanted to get it away from the atmosphere because we might lose it if with only a 10 kilometer range, as well as it was very high in orbit and it might have issues uh, escaping the system. And in real life, if there was a asteroid 10 kilometers from the Kármán line, which is the line where it's technically assumed to be space, it would eventually re-enter because of how there's still atmospheric particles there. In KSP that isn't there, but since we can have time warp glitches that can kind of simulate that. So this is another MSL derived uh, single stage to orbit. It looks pretty similar to what I've used before, although this one has slightly more fuel uh, fairing. And uh, the ARD-1 ship is a quite an interesting ship, so in, in uh, KSP.90 and before that we had the ion engine and we had the Gigantor uh, solar panels. I believe, that, I believe that's what they called. Uh, just large solar panels. But um, an issue was that the... Well, ion engines in real life are extremely low thrust, and they were very much higher in KSP, but they were still rather low. They received a buff. So in old KSP, 0.90, two solar panels, two of the giant ones, would be adequate to run a single ion engine. They're called Dawn engines now after the series probe which is uh, in orbit right now, or on series in real life. And uh, in the new one, their thrust was, I believe, quadrupled to 2 kilonewtons, the same as an ant engine, which is really, really good for an ion engine. And uh, they also now use way less power, so you can run two of them on a single panel, giant panel, and um, a giant panel is almost enough to run three. It's very close. But, uh, so... This ARD-1 device, ARD-1 probe, has two ion engines on the back providing us with four kilonewtons of thrust and uh, a single giant solar panel. Due to its strong SAS and small size, I didn't have to deal with uh, having it balanced and I figured it would be better to just have a single solar panel and save mass. We're using the new 1.25 meter Xenon tank, which is the biggest Xenon tank in the game and it's a rather new part. It came out with 1.0. It's a very, very nice part. It makes it so you don't have, to have ugly, tiny tanks everywhere. And uh, I was able to put both ion engines onto that part, al although it did involve a little bit of clipping. Anyway, battery power, lights to view the asteroid, and a big claw. The ARD-1 is just to catch the asteroid and move it around. It is not meant to drill the asteroid. That will be the ARD-2, which has not yet been built. So this video does include the entire rendezvous with the asteroid, and uh, I am making use of the Ion Engine's beautiful ISP uh, efficiency, so I didn't do this the most efficient way, I'm sure, but I didn't need to. So uh, if you'd like to see the actual asteroid, you can skip ahead to about 8 minutes and 40 seconds into the video, and uh, that'll show you the asteroid. But if you'd like to see the actual um, encounter, and uh, you want to listen to me talk, you can just keep watching. So, again, very high delta V on this thing. I don't know because I don't have mech or anything. But the orbit ended up... Well, not all, I already told you the parameters of how far it was, barely missing the atmosphere and twice as far as Minmus, but it also inclined at almost a 45 degree inclination. What I did was just extend the orbit until I got a kind of close intercept. I wanted to catch the asteroid before it got near the periaps because we would have an issue if, if I didn't do that and it would fly back out and it'd be hard to catch and then I uh, obviously did the braking. This is just like it's like rendezvousing with a station but it's harder because the asteroid is not on a very nice trajectory at all. 
And uh, the final mission goal for this was to move the periapsis up to about 600,000 meters, which is a safe range, and uh, bring the apoapsis down. You won't see me moving the apoapsis in this video because it did take a while and there wasn't much to watch, but I did do that afterwards. The ion engines on just the probe are very effective. They, with their buffed thrust and uh, only requiring one panel, they're very, very nice. They work really well. And um, with the asteroid, well, let's, let's go over the asteroid. So the asteroid is, uh, again, Class C. It weighs about 41 tons, as opposed to this probe, which I believe weighs less than 2 tons. So big difference. It's rather large. And the nice thing is that 83% of the asteroid its mass, by mass, is ore, which can be refined into fuel. So this thing is just a floating, orbiting gold mine for uh, fueling missions in the future. So I can uh, eventually send something to this, test out drilling materials. Asteroids in Kerbin orbit will be useful. Not as useful, though, as the ones in Drez orbit, which is one of my long-term targets, is to set up a refueling base around Drez. This will serve this mission, well, as long as future asteroid missions in, in Kerbin orbit will allow me to test out ships I'm going to need to go to Drez. Um, the ARD-1 probably could get to Drez, maybe. I don't think it could achieve orbit, and it definitely couldn't rendezvous with an asteroid. So it's definitely going to be, need to be upgraded. But this is going to... The ARD-1 can be used in its current state on Drez, in Drez orbit. Um, because the asteroid's so big, I could see it from far away, which was nice, and uh, I actually missed the center of mass on my first run, which means that when I burned, it slowly started tilting. Uh, that could be corrected by stopping the burn and, and re-correcting with SAS. Uh, after the video, I did re-correct the claw positioning. I didn't bother to change the inclination because um, I just didn't feel like doing that yet, and it, it's not that hard to rendezvous with when it's uh, in a smaller orbit. The issue with this was really its long period. Uh, period of about, I believe it was nine Earth days. I have it on Earth time. And uh, it just takes a really long time for it to come around. And that means if you miss it while it's close, you're gonna wait a long time for it to come back. And it's hard to catch when it's leaving. So uh, no Kerbals on this mission, obviously. It's just an unmanned probe. Oh, I have a tip for you guys. Uh, you probably heard this before, but you noticed, you may have noticed earlier in the video on the batteries on the side, I uh, turned one of them off by clicking the little arrow so it shows uh, no sign. And what that does is, if let's say you forget to operate your solar panel or the solar panel breaks and your probe runs out of power during time warp. Okay, it's useless unless you have one of these batteries turned off. You can turn on and off batteries without having any power or control on the ship. So if you do that, now you have enough power to reopen the solar panels, uh, move the ship, possibly make some mission-saving corrections in trajectory. And uh, so I highly recommend you do this on all probes. I even do it on manned missions as well if I have the chance. Uh, you probably want to do it right as you launch because doing it in the VIB might involve turning off all the batteries, which you don't want. So uh, we're coming up on actually encountering the asteroid now in this part of the video, and you should be able to see it within the next 10 seconds. If you are skipping here when I told you about five minutes ago, uh, welcome back. Oh, and uh, so I'll let you watch the asteroid, because I've told you all about the rest of this mission, and I'll uh, talk about mods. So uh, I asked for mods in the last couple of videos, and if you wanted them or not, and thanks for your feedback. At this moment, there, although I've heard both sides, there appear to be more people wanting just stock, and uh, I'm a little disappointed, but I do have a lot to do. So for this time being, uh, KSP Exploration is staying stock. We are staying stock, no mods yet. Um, I might, I'm probably going to reconsider this and ask for new uh, opinions later in the series, but for now, uh, no mods. Anyway, uh, thank you for watching the... Uh, first asteroid redirect of the series and uh, hopefully we can use this for fuel and uh, testing out new technologies uh, thanks for watching uh, please subscribe if you enjoyed and uh, if you have any comments feel free to use the comment section see you next time